Someone once said everyone sees the world in a different way, so when someone dies, it is, in a way, the death of an entire world. So, Reddit. What unique world will die with you? The unique world of every broken street light being promptly reported to the local council for remediation. After I've passed, the areas that I live and work will literally be darker without me. Edit, long long day trying to get my 8-month-old daughter better from a bug and I've just opened Reddit to this. What on earth? You guys are awesome. Edit, thank you for the silver and gold kind strangers. I shall continue my reporting with renewed purpose. I love the wording here, local council for remediation whereas I'm more likely to think, who the F is responsible for this shit? Well the local council of course. Business business. I have a book I'm trying to finish before I die. I started the world building when I was a teenager as a way to stay sane, I needed something to daydream about when I was bored, and I filled over a dozen notebooks and sketchbooks with content. I channeled all the crazy things going on in my life into the characters. I've got about four books worth of content typed out now, when I'm trying to clean up. I saw a post the other day about someone who published their late dad's book because he was too afraid to do it himself. That scared the shit out of me. I don't want to die and for my entire fake world to disappear. Even if it sucks, I want it to live on. Edit, I'm totally blown away by everyone's feedback and support. Someone suggested at least making a sub, it's here, Rye Like Gods. I'm very busy today so can't add anything to it just yet, and I don't quite know what I'm going to do with it, but it's there. I want to read this. Me too. Plus one. Yeah, same. About five worlds will die with me cause I have four dogs. And because of this you are forbidden from dying, sir. The amount of original stories I made up out of boredom. Some of which I haven't finished as I can't find the proper ending. Anybody can write a beginning, it's the endings, the endings are hard. Till the end of the year, I'm only writing endings for the four books I have in my mind, and partially on paper. Honestly, the hardest part is the chunk in the middle in my opinion. I've got dozens of ideas, messages, character developments, but the bulk is still not there. This I feel this so much I have dozens of stories with beginnings and ends it's getting from point A to point Z that is the problem. Maybe you need to brainstorm cool endings and then work backwards to come up with intriguing introductions. I have beginnings and endings I need the fillings between the two. You could pull a Star Wars and have the characters visit a casino planet and free a bunch of horses. Bold of you to assume that I ever will die. Heroes get remembered, but legends never die. Heroes get remembered, legends never die thanks for the sweet nostalgia trip man. Ill do you one better the Sandlot, Babe Ruth scene. My world won't die because I've written it down. Please do explain. Your world is your perception of it. By writing it down, you share that perception with others. So essentially your world lives on with them. Granted, is your world public? Making your world open source. Follow shortly by the mod that lets Doom run on it. It can run Doom but the real question is can it run Crisis? Existential yes. Seems like half a life. As an actual answer and an attempt to not be pretentious, this isn't helped by the fact that it's 3am, I do feel that all things considered, I have a pretty uncommon route to life. And though I have an incredibly low self-esteem at times I do recognize that a lot of people see me as a close friend, and am constantly surprised and mildly confused at how many feel that I'm a good person. While some things like my love for astronomy and for my pet snake would die with me, I think the most impactful thing would be a harm to my friends. We all have our own stories and experiences and while mine may be different than some, they aren't unique. However my relationships with my friends and my loved ones are something I treasure and recognize as rare, and those are the most important things that would die with me. JK I love my pet snake more than like maybe one or two humans. What's the name of the snake? Where people want to know what the plant of an eggplant is. Egg. It's literally in the name how is that difficult? I am a daughter, the oldest to both my mother and father. I am a granddaughter, 
to five people. I am a sister, to seven people, I am the only sister one of them will ever have. I am a wife, the first to my husband. I am a dog owner, the only owner has ever known. People describe me as caring and thoughtful. They say I always try to see two sides to the story even if I am invested. They say I am imaginative. They say I can sing decently as well as draw. They tell me I can be very loud, proud, and opinionated, but also very quiet. There are people like me all over the world, so my life and characteristics may not be unique. But no one else will be able to say that they are the oldest to my mother and father, that they are the granddaughter to five people, that they are the sister of my seven siblings, that they were the first wife of my husband, that they were the only owner my dogs ever had. So while my experiences and characteristics aren't unique, who I am to the people I love is, and that is what would die with me. Daenerys Targaryen wants to know your location. Me and my friend created a whole fantasy world, with history and characters and stuff. Thing is, despite it being our world, I think we both see it differently, we both have different interpretations of the characters and we don't always agree on the small details. If I were to die, maybe the whole world wouldn't be lost, but it'll be incomplete. Let's say I just wanted to mosey on into this world, who would I be and what am I eating that was so enjoyable it made me absent-minded enough to do so? Eggplant Anyone ever feel lonely inside your own head? Stuck in your own world, only being able to reach out through this flesh. Recently, I've made an intentional choice to be very open about my world, even if it hurts to tell. In wanting to be vulnerable about my broken world, and the pain that I feel. Because if someone can connect to that, then maybe they can experience a part of my world as well. And maybe I can experience a part of theirs. The more vulnerable I am, the less lonely I feel in my own head. This is the catch. It opens you up to the world and people around you. You stand to gain an enormous amount of positive things but it also opens you up to a lot of negative things. A lot of people do not think that's worth the risk or are too afraid to take that risk. I am not one of them. It rather suffer a thousands heartbreaks, disappointments, failures, etc. before I am willing to admit there isn't something some love or some friend amazing out there for me. Be bold and be cautious but be willing to take the risks to make your world as fulfilling and complete as possible. Godspeed. This. It kind of involves our comfort zones and the faces we show the world as well. The more you take down your walls, the more open you are to everything, both positive and negative. The first step there is to actually realize that you have your walls up, and, even if it is hard, gradually lowering them by starting to do things you are not used to. This will impact you in some way, because you are essentially exposing a vulnerable part of yourself that you have guarded and hidden throughout your life, but by allowing people to see who you really are, you learn a lot about yourself and others. It's sad that our modern society pushes these masks upon us, and it is sad that we as a whole don't have enough courage to push out of the comfort that lies in the lies, but there is so much more out there to see for those who are willing to open their eyes. Hell, this starts to sound like a speech I wrote once haha. To all of you opening your minds and eyes, see you out there. Ah shit man all my dumb characters. One where Danny DeVito is revered as a god. A real shitty one. I hope things turn around for you. I have faith they will. Hit me up if you need to talk. I got upset and ruined my fifth birthday party by throwing a gigantic fit and making sure I made an exaggerated frowning face in all of my pictures as a reminder to my mom to never interrupt me while I was talking to take a candid unflattering photo. Whatever world that created a five-year-old birthday terrorist probably needs to die much sooner than I most likely will. Side note. Every adult who confronted me about my bullshit that day tried to tell me that I was ruining my birthday and I would regret it. I justified it to each of them by letting them know that I would have other fifth birthdays because everything repeats itself after we die and the universe dies. They thought I was stupid but Futurama showed the same theory, and I clearly don't regret my actions, so I'm obviously not the stupid one. 